October. That's a big news, isn't it? Do you know about that? She did a little interview with Variety and essentially told them that she's gone sober, which I'm surprised about. Again, I'm not. I gotta say, I'm still not a fan of Miley Cyrus. I think the whole affair with you know jumping into hip hop and grinding all up against Robin Thicke essentially could lead into the breakup of his marriage and you know uh, twerking on Michael made it and then turning around and saying you know hip hop was you know bottom feeder music just rubbed me up the wrong way and I think a lot of fans of hip hop would say the same thing she came in um, put on a bit of blackface culturally and then ducked out when things got sticky and went back to you know singing, singing country ballads which is, she's really good at um, but I don't know. Um, she's super talented, and I think sometimes when you're that young and you're going through stuff, especially when it's been tainted with drugs and alcohol, it can lead you a bit astray. And I just thought in general about the whole of her being sober as maybe an indication that she wants to take things to the next level because she's supremely talented, isn't it? As a musician, as an artist, right? As a singer, um, the ability is clearly there but maybe the application isn't maybe you know if you're spending most of your time hungover it's probably hard to record music and go to the studio and there's and in my opinion i've always been a believer that the people especially the artists that perpetuate this idea that they're always on it 24 7 aren't usually it's the kind of this the, just the general kind of um understand that we have about future right that he purports to be this guy that's pipping pills all the time but it's impossible to do that if you're you know making albums worth of 24 26 track songs jumping on everyone's jumping on everyone's song and doing a feature it's just impossible to do that um so the, and and it also does seem if you look at you know contemporary pop stars we have at the moment or icons of in their um genres there does seem to be a point where they have to sort of like decide whether they want to be just like a regular average random artist or if they want to be you know a big artist they have to just decide and then you have to kind of correlate actions towards them and one of the things that a lot of their people do is is stack off the drugs and alcohol it's a common theme i've seen um it's a common theme i've seen amongst some of the more prominent artists and i think she's got a bit here where she mentions it da, 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 da. um she said uh, this is a question here uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so do you ever look back at some of the things that you've done and say, what was I thinking? And my Cyrus says, one of my favorite interviews is when I say, anyone that smokes weed is a dummy. That one I love so to send to my parents, who are big stoners, every now and then. It's been really important for me over the last year living a sober lifestyle because I really want to polish up my craft. I had a really big vocal surgery in November. I had freaking four weeks where I wasn't allowed to talk. I was so ripped, writing on the whiteboard, yelling at everybody, laughs. And I had this one big bicep from just yelling at my mum, still trying to do meetings. But it prepared me for the stillness and the quietness. And that happens, and you have a really big crisis of a moment right imagine if you're Miley Cyrus and you lose your voice right she's got a pretty distinctive voice singing and speaking so to lose that must be really frightening because that's essentially your identity your entire identity is your voice and then to suddenly lose that just for you no fault of your food through the up uh, for your own fault right let's staying late at night smoking drinking getting to all sorts of madness um it makes you re it makes you revise what you're doing and think you know what i can't take this gift i've been given for granted so that's a quote to see and it continues to say what was the surgery for my doctor she says here looked at my vocal cords and he said no one shy has ever got to got has as no one shy ever has to get this surgery this is from overuse of your vocal cords he says um it's no surprise that i would have this i've been touring since i was 12 but it's not even the touring that's a hard part it's you end up staying up late and meetups and greetings and things like that and obviously i just talk a shit ton and it continues says um you mentioned living a sober life so i said are you sober sober she said yeah i've been sober for six months um at the beginning it was just about the vocal surgery but i've been thinking a lot about my mother my mother was adopted and i inherited some of her feelings that she had the abandonment feelings and i wanted to prove that you're wanted and valued my dad's parents divorced when i was free so my dad raised himself i did a lot of family history which is a lot of addiction and mental health challenges so just going through all that asking why am i the way i am by understanding the past we understand the present and the future much more clearly i think therapy is great so she definitely sounds a lot more mature and it's really interesting to think about that right that you know so there is a um, the idea that some of her addictions and personality quirks are inherited right 
but then sometimes to deal with some of those quirks that you have um or with your macabre view of the world whatever it may be you might want to medicate yourself right you might want to numb the pain um drink and do alcohol which is essentially the one thing that you can't do because your dna predisposes you to addiction it's a really messed up thing in it, it how it works and i think in the future we'll look at drug addiction a lot with a lot more we'll look at drug addiction with a lot more sympathy i think nowadays we do sort of kind of you know dash people to the side if they are hooked on certain things right um for some reason but i think once we start once science kind of progresses and we start to have new findings about you know what actually happens with addiction we start to get some definitive proof behind it we'll look back on how we treated people that had severe drug addictions right especially running in their family and we'll be a lot more we'll be hopefully be more sympathetic more sympathetic sorry um in the future regarding that sort of stuff um but yeah man it's great to hear that she's sober great to hear that she's trying to get her life back in order and again i just think it's a cautionary tale for a lot of young creatives coming up in the scene you know in order to do really great work you have to just commit 100 percent. there's no way you can they, i think the anomalies exist right you think of lemmy from motorhead you think of you know a thingy from black sabbath right there are some that do exist right my entire even you know he's still alive um they do exist these anomalies but i think for the most part if you really want to be a great if you really want to just pursue your craft regardless of being great just if you want to just continue playing open mics in your local bar scene you have to get to a point where you just can't be drinking every time you go and play you just can't do it you have to make a choice of like okay cool i'll have one when i'm finished or i have one on my way back or i only do it on the last month of the week whatever you're gonna or last weekend of the month sorry you're gonna have to do something that allows you to do most of your craft with a clear mind and i'm a big fan of doing it i remember when i first started djing as well i I was a big fan of just doing completely sober because i wanted to feel i wanted to feel how awkward it was i didn't want to numb it right i wanted to feel the awkwardness of it um i went to just feel uncomfortable so i could get used to that uncomfortable feeling sober so that when i'm doing it drunk i would obviously be you know used to it or i would just have such a skill set built up of doing it sober that i wouldn't want to put myself at any disadvantage by kind of you know um getting intoxicated before a gig and i think that's really important and again i'm I'm a nobody to, to give you that kind of advice but i think if you are pursuing something and you just want to take it to the next level usually that's something that's going to make a big change the idea of just like doubling down and concentrating on the work and kind of ignoring everything else but it's so hard to do that it's so so difficult especially with if you've got a big group of friends um or if you or if you happen to be the person in your group who is clearly defined no or if you happen to be that person in your group whose identity is you know mostly centered around going out and getting wasted it's very difficult then to change that especially amongst your friends they're not gonna take to it lightly but yeah big up uh, Miley Cyrus for changing things around still haven't forgiven her for the hip-hop shit but you know personally big you up